everyone, Julia Elliott here for We Love Cycling. I'm out in Patagonia in Chile at the moment getting ready for a gravel race and whilst it's meant to be spring here it's certainly feeling very wintry. Of course in Europe we are heading into winter so I thought this would be a good chance for me to share with you my tips for cycling through winter. The first thing to check is of course the weather. I am scrupulous about doing this. There are several different apps that you can use but one of the ones I like is called Epic Ride Weather. It gives you quite a lot of information on wind direction and it pulls in the data from the ride you're going to do if you've already plotted your route and then tells you exactly what the conditions will be like. When choosing kit it's best to go for lots of different layers. You want to be warm but you want to be able to moderate your temperature. Two-way zips are really good for this. When choosing fabrics, merino can be a good choice because it stays warm when wet and it dries quickly. Down is not quite so good when conditions are wet, although it is very warm and lightweight. When you're choosing your socks, make sure you don't go for anything that makes your shoes too tight because the tightness can restrict blood flow and make your feet even colder. The same goes for your gloves. It can be a good idea to wear a very thin pair of lightweight gloves under a thicker pair if you've got enough space to do so. Overshoes are great if you have any. I would always recommend wearing those in winter. Um, although I have used plastic bags on my feet before and they worked okay. You don't have to go for cycle specific clothing. Lots of outdoor clothing can work just as well as long as it doesn't flap around too much or get caught in your chain. You might want to look outside your core discipline for something that works for you. For example, a lot of road cycling jackets don't have hoods, whereas I prefer to have a hood that goes over my helmet for when it's raining. And you might find that mountain biking or trail riding focused brands have a greater selection of things for you to choose from. Gore-Tex is absolutely fabulous for staying dry, but remember you will heat up more quickly no matter what the breathability of the item you're wearing, so adjust the layers underneath accordingly. I like to use a versatile neck gaiter. This keeps you warm around your neck, but obviously you can wear it on your head, you can adjust the position. I also like to wear a merino skull cap. It's way more comfortable than a traditional cycling cap under your helmet. For desperately cold days, I have heat packs which are activated when you open them. They're little charcoal pads and I put them on the top of my feet rather than underneath because underneath is super uncomfortable. And the same goes for your hands. You slip them into the top of your glove. It's a bit of a luxury, but it's nice for occasional use. Out on the bike, consider your route carefully. I tend to prefer to ride off-road in winter because there's less wind chill, it's a bit more sheltered and there's less chance of you encountering black ice unexpectedly. Think about running lower pressure for more grip and you might want to consider going tubeless. Changing a tube can be annoying at the best of times but when it's freezing or raining out, that's something you want to try and avoid. Make sure to clean and take care of your bike very well in winter. The road conditions can be super harsh on your components and you want to particularly make sure that your brakes are clean so that they work well. Inspect your tyres before you leave. Again, you want to avoid getting any punctures. And of course, always lube your chain. You're probably going to want to go for some wet lube in the winter. If it's rainy or dark, don't forget your lights. Stay safe, stay seen. Then get out there and have some fun. Of course, now I'm all prepared and perfectly dressed. It's not even raining! <laughs> <laughs> 